Hello, everybody. Cross over Thursday on the Locked On NFL podcast. And the problem we have with these is we don't get to talk to these guys all the time. So we do. Um, we're not necessarily prepared for class, but we are ready to go now. You have Jeff Lloyd, host of the Locked On Browns podcast. Garrett Bush, also host of the Locked On uh, Browns podcast. Dan Wade, part of the tandem over at Locked On Chargers. And you are Locked On Browns. Your daily Cleveland Browns podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And we're getting ready for what should be an exciting one here. Um, you know, In my time here covering the Browns, uh, they played in 20. 20- if anybody doesn't remember, that was a bath. And of course, that was back in the days where Nick Chubb wasn't allowed to play because we had to be nice to Carlos Hyde. Um, then you had your affair last year. Um, I believe the final of 47, 42, 89 points between the Cleveland now, Browns Jeff, and the Los Angeles. I hate to stop you, but were you part of that that one win year where RG3 <laughs> got the dub? We can't forget about that, my guy. <laughs> CG, I jumped in the next year. I jumped in the next year for 0-16 to secure oh. that number one overall selection. Oh. Um, but we're going to get into it here. Um, yeah, look, look, Chargers, Browns, both teams faced in, facing a little adversity. I think maybe both teams go you know, for maybe hopes high. But look, it's a 17-game season. Things are going to go a little crazy in September, especially with the limited amount of preseason, limited amount of camp. This is the way these things go. Dan, I want to get to you first off. Um, and obviously, two significant injuries right now for the Chargers. Um, Nick Bosa and you know Garrett and I were actually joking about this the other day. Oh, minor groin surgery. He'll be back in a few weeks. We don't ever call anything groin-related minor, so we're not even going to go that route. And obviously, uh, you know, without Slater, your left tackle. I mean, those are big, significant losses for a team. But when your team is well-constructed, your team has good players, you have who you think is the face of your franchise at the quarterback position, you got to go kind of go out and sometimes and basically overcome adversity. Yeah, 100%. I, I mean, with Joey Bosa specifically, he's just a, a player that can't be matched. I mean, really, either one of them, right? Rashawn Slater and Joey Bosa, nobody has backups for dudes like that that there isn't going to be a significant gap, right? Or a significant drop-off. The Chargers got a lot last week out of Jamari Sawyer, a six-round guard that came in, started at left tackle, and allowed zero pressures and 41 pass blocking a snap. So, like, that was great to see. That never happens. And the Chargers just historically under Tom Telesco might have drafted three good offensive linemen, and all three of them are currently in the starting five for the Chargers right now. But Joey Bosa can't be replaced. They have a couple of guys in Chris Rumpf and Kyle Van Noy who have kind of taken that mantle early on and tried to keep up the Chargers' pass rush. But it's been a mixed bag. I mean, from everything that we've seen so far, I think for me, the bigger one this week that the Chargers probably are going to be missing that he didn't say is Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen has basically one half under his belt this season. It seems like he suffered a setback last week when he was trending to potentially play. This week, he hasn't been in practice yet. It's Wednesday as we're recording this. So, I mean, we'll see what happens the rest of the week. But Keenan Allen will be a huge loss. He is easily, you know, outside of Justin Herbert, the offense's best weapon. And he looks like he's probably going to miss this one. And, you know, there was a grid uh, that I looked at. And you know how they have those strike zones. If you're if you're a baseball fan, they have those zones where down and away, he's, you know, really red or <laughs> hot and up, cold. Uh, yeah. Hot and cold. This dude, this dude had all hots. Oh, the whole thing was hot. The whole left. I was like, is this Steph Curry? Uh, the right. thing about Herbert that gets you is the fact that he spreads the ball around to so many different people. They got this guy named Palmer. I don't know who he is. He just came out of nowhere, and now he catches the ball. Austin Eckler can beat you on the ground and in the air. He has over 100 uh, in both right now. Uh, and then you talk about, you know, they got guys like Mike Williams who, you know, is somehow um, some a little bit forgotten sometimes. You could you look up and say, where's Mike Williams at? But he just had another 100-yard game last week. And the, thing about the, and the thing about Herbert is he's a little banged up right now, but what scares me the most is the fact that he's a sneaky, good athlete. Like, he... He can run the ball. He can use his legs. He can extend plays. He throws the ball uh, deep, middle, short, intermediate routes. It's just, you know, this is the first um, the first quarterback that the Browns have played where it doesn't matter if you're not, let alone busting coverages to give up the game. Sure. You could be over a guy. He has the ability to put it on, on somebody and make throws. And you say you just have to shake his hand and say, like, so that's just a heck of a throw. Um, 
so to me, uh, it, it's all about kind of the biggest storylines. It, it's a style clash. Um, the, you guys want to, they want to throw the football and, and we better run it. And that's what yeah. we can do. And, and it's all about who does it best. And um, I, I think the run game is the only chance that the Browns have to win this football game if they, they stick to it and, and excel at it. Yeah, and last week was nice because the, the first game against the Jacksonville Jaguars, Justin Herbert did look like it was affecting him, that rib cartilage fracture that he suffered against the Chiefs in week two. Last week, it looked like the same old dude. You know what I mean? Throwing for 340, two touchdowns, no picks. Should have had a pick early in the game, but we don't have to talk about that. But he is kind of like a computer, right? He does spread it around. I think sometimes he can actually push the ball more because I think sometimes, you know, this computer brain just says, hey, the check down is technically the best option here. But maybe you should try to thread the needle more, you know, sometimes instead you know, of trying to get two yards on first down, right? Maybe push the ball down the field. I think the Chargers actually held Justin Herbert back in that way, not pushing the ball down the field on earlier downs. Very content to run on first down. A lot of easy play actions to get seven or eight on first down, but they're not really pushing the envelope. And I think they're doing other teams a big favor when they do that. I think his average depth of target on first and second down is 31st, only above Kyler Murray as far as starting NFL quarterbacks. Oh. But at the same time, yeah, I mean, he's not Mitch Trubisky. He's not Joe Flacco. It's going to be a huge test for the Browns. For me, though, the biggest storyline of this game is how can this Chargers defense that is giving up 5.4 yards per carry on average, right, six-plus yards per carry to running backs, stop Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, and this Cleveland Browns offense? Because, I mean, I think every team goes into it like, hey, yeah, make Jacoby Brissett beat you. That's an easy game plan to say. They've still been able to run on everybody even when they know what's coming. And the Chargers have given up three straight games where they've had at least one 50-plus yard run breakout against them. Well, that's the thing Garrett and I've been trying to talk about here with our, you know, our listeners this week is, um, you know, it's not Baker Mayfield anymore, but some of the things that the Browns did really well in this game last year, they're still here. Whether it was Nick yeah. Chubb, whether it was Kareem Hunt, whether it was David Njoku. Um, that was, you know, David Njoku's best game as a pro to that point last year. And look, he's shown some really good signs to this point. And the other thing we keep trying to say is, um, you know, when we go into these games, you know, oh, you know, this team has had problems with the run. Well, have you faced an offensive line as good as the Browns? Well, have you faced running backs as good as Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt? Right. Um, and last week, this was kind of the things that, you know, kind of, you know, and I think the Browns, and, and this is where, you know, and Coach Stefanski putting it on himself, I think the Browns offensively thought like things were going to be easy enough for them. And I think they thought the defense would do a good enough job where the game was never going to get down, basically to the nitty gritty like it did. Right. Um, if he had thought about it earlier, you probably would have you know found w more ways to make sure you got the guys involved. Nick, it's just an absolute pleasure. I mean, he's an absolute most unassuming superstar there is in the NFL. He doesn't want microphones in his face, unlike any other star in the NFL. He doesn't want extra airtime. He wants less airtime. The guy just truly goes about his business. Sounds and like you Justin get, Herbert. <laughs> very, Justin very Herbert hates that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. We're starting to build these rosters of people like that because Amari Cooper yeah. at the wide receiver is another one who's kind of like that as well. Never wants to hear his name heard, but he'll just go out there and do his thing. But they just play hard. They work hard. And the, it, it's a tailor. It, the, the fit as far as this outside zone scheme just so perfectly fits Nick Chubb because basically you have this scheme. And then you say, well, we want a back that can do A, B, and C. Can he run well to the outside? Can he break a tackle, take it up the sidelines? Yeah, Nick Chubb can do that. When it starts to get pressurized, is he a smart enough, intelligent guy to find the cutback lane and still be able to break at whatever tackles that are going to be backside pursuit? He's just a pleasure to watch go about his business the way he does things. And again, most unassuming guy there is. You know, it, it, he literally feels like he he feels like he's an extension of the offensive line. It's the old adage, oh, you didn't do anything. You're just the running back, the offensive line. Or not. Nick Chubb is truly the guy who plays that style and yeah. believes that every yard he gets, it was because it was opened up for by the, uh, the offensive line. So it, it's been great to see it work this way. And, you know, we, we've had, you know, every week it's, oh, well, I don't think Jacoby Brissett's this good. And Jacoby's been good. I mean, the two interceptions, you just, he's not a guy who's going to excel in, in a two minute drill. Everything about Jacoby Brissett is a little slower and just nuanced the way he goes about his business. He's not this super accelerated guy. Um, so, you know, they've kind of put him in a bad couple of positions, getting themselves into those positions, you know, to, to have him win the game. But again, for, for me, the running game, yeah, this should always be the key. And I'll say it when Deshaun Watson comes back, it should be the key when you have something that is that good. Just run with it, baby. Yeah, I mean, I get that for sure. I think especially when you have 
something that you can do even when everybody knows it's coming. Because, I mean, there's a lot of good rushing tags. I mean, probably the Ravens are in that tier as well. At least their quarterback is. I mean, maybe not the running backs as much. But to have that weapon, to have those guys, I mean, I think Nick Chubb just doesn't get mentioned with the guys like Jonathan Taylor, with the guys like Derrick Henry enough. Where That's absolutely where he belongs as a pure runner. I mean, I know every single Chargers fan would take one of those. Every single Chargers fan wanted David Njoku after he lit them up last year in the in that game. That was absolutely wild. He was a free agent. Chargers fans had him up there as, you know, one of the top guys on their wish list. Gerald Everett's been really, really good, too. But, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, that's not a one-on-one matchup. And I think the other thing that hurts the Chargers here is their perimeter has been really, really poor against the run. Their DBs and the Browns are going to make those DBs have to tackle. And I think that is one of the things that should concern Charger fans the most for sure. We're going to flip it up here. I mean, there's going to be some good matchups here. And I think the thing that's kind of enjoyable here is this is two teams about a calendar year ago faced each other. A lot of the faces are the same. So there is some newness here. Mike Williams, monster game last year in this game. Austin Eckler, monster. Let's just be honest. If he played offense, he probably had a good game in this game last year <laughs> yeah. in a 47-42 affair. Um, but now, defensively, you know, little, little, some subtle changes here right? as far as maybe some guys, you know, trying to make a difference here as we do this. Garrett Bush going to kick us off here in our second segment. Crossover Thursday, Cleveland Browns. Los Angeles Chargers, Locked On Browns, Locked On Chargers. Do you ever wish that every NFL game you could get up to date and accurate information before placing bets or locking in your fantasy lineup? Well, now you can with the Elias Game Plan app, the ultimate sports betting and fantasy companion for the NFL, the NBA, and MLB. Whether you're part of a fantasy tournament, placing bets, or just a huge sports fan and stats nerd, Elias Game Plan has every Thing you need. You see and hear their trusted facts all the time from ESPN, your local radio broadcasts, television broadcasts. But now you can have all the stats, facts, and team and player updates in the palm of your hands. They are all backed by their renowned research team. We know all about the pace that Nick Chubb is on. We know all about the pace that the Browns' defense, sadly, has been on at times. You can use Elias Sports app to get all this information to give yourself the best information. Take this NFL season to the next level and download the Elias Game Plan app today. Choose from three game plans when you subscribe, weekly, monthly, or annual. But I can get you a 25% off your first month when you choose the monthly subscription. Just use our promo code LOCKEDONNFL25. Find Elias Game Plan Sports Betting in the App Store or Play Store today. And again, use our promo code LOCKEDONNFL25. NFL crossover Thursday. We got the Browns and the Chargers. Put up one of the best instant classic games last year. Uh, Points galore, tight ends, running backs, receivers. Everybody got into the everybody got into the scoring nature. And this week is I think it's going to be. It it has a chance to be a a decently high scoring game. Uh, uh, Style uh, clash in terms of fights, passing game versus the running game. And I think this is going to be uh, on full on full display at First Energy Stadium coming up this Sunday. Uh, Dan, we talk about the, the matchups, and, and I think one of the biggest matchups will be the receiving core going against the Browns' defensive secondary. Uh, that secondary has given up big plays uh, in 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 op- inopportune times in the first four games, and we have we just talked about how we we're playing Baker, and and, and you talking about Joe Flacco and some of these other quarterbacks. Marcus Mariota completed seven seven passes last week, but one of those passes was for forty some odd yards um, on a game clinching drive that really hurt the Browns. When you look at Mike Williams, I look at him as a big big body receiver, a guy that could go up and high point the ball. Uh, big, I think Herbert will put it on him. And then he's going against guys like Denzel Ward, who has not played up to his contract level, has not played up to what he would say his talent level is. Had an interception last week. He looked a lot better. Grant Delpit, um, he who has been struggling as well, looked a lot better as well in that game. But I look at it from the secondary standpoint and say, listen, if the Browns are out of position, they're going to be in trouble. And you throw that, you throw in the mix in uh, this factor. The Browns are without a major pass rusher, too. Uh, Miles Garrett and Jadavion Clowney not involved in this game. So it's almost like a mirror match, right? It's like, okay, we'll take away Bosa. We'll take away Miles Garrett. We'll see what's left, right? So um, those are some of the matchups I'm interested in. What are, what are your thoughts on some matchups that uh, that you're interested in seeing? 
Yeah, I mean, one of the ones I had on my list was Denzel Ward versus Mike Williams. If they are going to have him primarily on someone, he's the obvious option, right? You make Josh Palmer beat you, make DeAndre Carter beat you. The Chargers just have a lot of dudes, though. Like, there's no way to really try to shut them down by just taking away one guy. But they've been much worse when teams have been able to take away Mike Williams. I mean, it's all boom or bust. He has two games this year where he's combined for three catches and 15 yards as a $20 million receiver, right? You think that's getting Mm. griped about? The other two games, though, he's gone for 115 plus, right? And one of them, he scores a touchdown. So he's been very boom or bust. If Denzel Ward can have a really productive game against him, that is going to really hurt the Chargers offense. But they do have other guys. And they could be getting another one back this week with Donald Parham. But... I mean, I'm really liking you saying that Miles Garrett's not going to play in this game. I know he was back at practice as a limited participant because if, if Miles Garrett goes, I think the term physical specimen is something, you know, Garrett's one of them, obviously. But if you're talking about other guys, uh, I was talking about Garrett Bush. I mean, Miles Garrett is that guy, though. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about Miles Garrett, uh... but. No, I mean, I think that gets thrown around a lot. I mean, I saw the picture today of the Browns saying, hey, back at practice this week for Miles Garrett. And I was like, okay, yeah, that's that's a physical specimen. The dude is a freak. And he gets two matchups that are favorable for him. On one side, he has Jamari Sawyer, who's filling in for Rashawn Slater, who has, you know, super, I mean, he has one game at the NFL level. The, the entire preseason, he was playing left guard for the Chargers. He kicked out to left tackle last week. And was really, really good for them. Surprisingly good. And then Trey Pipkins has been a really big surprise on the right side so far this year. I think it's huge for the Chargers, though, if Jadavian Clowney still can't go. Because I think, obviously, Miles Garrett's a freak. He's going to get his in this game, right? But I do think, though, hey, at least if it's just him, you know exactly where to kind of shift things. You know where to shift the protection. You know where to send the help. As opposed to Jadavian Clowney and Miles Garrett going up against both of these tackles who are both inexperienced, I think that would be more of a nightmare. But Miles Garrett is still someone I'm going to be seeing in my nightmares leading up to this one. <laughs> There's no question. And the thing is, with Miles most of the time lining up over the left side, um, you know, if you're Herbert and you can get out of dodge, you're rolling to your arm side. So it kind of makes things a little easier. You know, and the one thing, you know, for bigger, taller quarterbacks is when you're rolling, you know, to your non-arm side. Right. You know, that's a lot to, you know, basically function into being able to get a throw off. Um, I, I'm told we're not totally sure yet on Jadavian Clowney, but the thing is if you don't practice for the Browns, Browns are old school with this. You don't practice, you usually don't play. That's the way it works for the Browns. We'll yeah. see. Sunday will be three weeks from the ankle injury he suffered against the Jets. Um I, I see, look, you know, now, like I said, we were talking earlier, you know, a couple of running backs that don't have much stake as far as names in the NFL gave the Browns fits last week. Austin Eckler, he's already been part of this will be his third game against the Browns, and he's been a pain in the butt in the first two. Um, so I'm, you know, concerned here with Jacob Phillips. Uh, last week was his first start at the mic. Uh, didn't go so well. Um, Jeremiah Usukoromoa. This is a guy, and look, you can't take away an Austin Eckler. Sure. But the point is, you do not want him to absolutely ruin your day. And, you know, again, here he is, same type of guy, 100 total yards plus through receiving, through rushing. The yeah. Chargers do such a great job of not, I, I, I want to say not overusing him because they understand how important he is in both facets of the game, Dan. Yeah, 100%. I, I mean, I think you get a guy like JOK to take away guys like Austin Eckler, right? At least that's the plan. It doesn't mean it's always going to play out that way, but that is the new breed of guys that, you know, can play linebacker and can go cover dudes like Austin Eckler because Austin Eckler is kind of in a realm of his own as well as far as, you know, he's somewhere in between the scat back and a full-blown NFL running back, but they're using him situationally. I mean, it's never bad to get the ball in his hands. Their running back by committee has kind of been a mess this year anyways. I mean, last week they ended up going with Sony Michelle, which is taking Austin Eckler off the field, right? Which is taking Josh Kelly off the field, who's actually been their most effective rusher through four games. So I think they're still kind of figuring out where they should go there. But I don't think there's any coincidence to the fact that, hey, last week the Chargers had their best rushing performance of the season, and they put up 10 more points than they had in any other game this season. They got two 10-plus yard you know, touchdown runs from Austin Eckler, who hadn't gotten to the end zone all season long but that's the thing though is he's kind of like we were talking before like he's a guy that can do nothing do nothing and then all of a sudden he has three touchdowns right and you're just trying to catch up and I think the game flow is going to be a big part of this too and we'll probably get into that next because I think when you do have a clash of styles like this if you're the Browns you don't want to get behind to the Chargers and have to throw against that secondary if you're the Chargers the last thing you want is for those Browns to get up on you and be able to give 
you know, 30 carries to Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb, 35 carries to those guys. Like, I think that's going to be a big part of it. That's probably going to play a huge factor in how this game plays out. Uh, Dan Wade's going to kick off some three here crossover Thursday, locked on Browns, locked on Chargers. Whether it's on your favorite podcast app, make sure you follow subscribe to both uh, shows. Whether it's YouTube, make sure you're subscribed. And key, as we keep telling everybody, notifications on. These shows drop, man. You want your phone to tell you, so you are ready to go. And uh, for all our Browns fans and Ohio sports fans listen, listeners, um, go to your Roku app. Uh, go to Locked On Cleveland Sports. You will get Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. You will get Locked On Browns. You get Locked On Guardians, which I, everybody is geek for Friday. And, of course, Locked On Cavaliers. Go ahead, check that. We're pretty excited about it. Uh, next evolution here. Um, and just appreciate everybody for being along for this ride. This episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Then all you have to do is add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and who you'd like to hire. That's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs in number one in delivering quality hires versus their leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockdown NFL. That's linkedin.com slash lockdown NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, we're going to be rehashing one of the best games of 2021. I mean, 209 passing yards for Justin Herbert in the fourth quarter of that game. That also had some, you know, crazy wins where <laughs> it's another big storyline for the Chargers going into this one is they're probably not going to have their kicker, which we found out on Wednesday. Their kicker has a quad is going to show up on the injury report and they might have to go sign somebody off the streets. Chargers don't have a great special teams unit. A game like this, which could get ugly, that could be a difference in a game. Like a field goal could end up deciding this game. If you look at betonline.net, it's about a three-point game right now in favor of the Chargers, and they're playing in Cleveland. So I think that makes a big difference as well. But when it gets down to this one, guys, obviously a clash of styles, a really exciting matchup, I think, for even just the average you know NFL fan out there because there's just a couple of teams – that really specialize. I mean, for the Chargers, you specialize in having a freak of nature quarterback. If you're the Browns, you specialize in having kind of a freak of nature at running back and just a running attack that nobody's really been able to stop yet. So it's time to put our money where our mouths are, boys. I mean, I think this one could go either way. I know Garrett was saying before the show he didn't feel good about this game, and I told them, hey, buddy, I'm right back at you. I don't know how good I feel about this game because I think there are places that both of these teams can exploit. For the Chargers, they're the <coughs> best offense that the Browns have faced so far. For the Browns, the Chargers have allowed a 50-plus yard rush in three straight games, which I wish I had the resources to find out the last team that did that. And now you're going up against someone who broke off a 50-plus yard rushing touchdown against you last year in Nick Chubb. So, Garrett, let's go. I mean, how are you feeling about it, man? How are you going to pick this one? Well, you know, I, I look at it like this. Uh, I, I think the Browns have the ability, um, and Jeff said it earlier, I think the Browns have to have, it, it, depending on whether Miles Garrett plays, that's he's about a, a, half, a point and a half, right? He yeah. he can sway things a little bit um, back in the Browns' way. I don't, I still don't think Clowney will play because he hasn't practiced. And Jeff said it, they need everything to kind of go right when you when you're with your backup quarterback and you're already at with Jacoby Brissett. So you're gonna, they're gonna need him to play efficient, no turnovers. They got to stay ahead of the chains. They got to make sure that it's a second and in, in short, second and medium, where they can set themselves up to be able to continue to run the ball. The worst thing that can happen is is you get down fourteen nothing to a team like that, and now you have to control, you have to fight yourself and and remind yourself to tell yourself like, hey, remember who we are. We're a running team. Don't abandon the run because if you do that, uh, this thing can get ugly quick. Um, I look at this game, and, and I, th I do think that the Browns will be able to keep the game close. If 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 Miles Garrett is not able to play and is not 100%, I don't have a good feeling about it. I, I would probably take the Chargers in this game. And I, I've said I somewhere 34-23, 34-23 um, in, in that area. I just don't think right now the way the secondary is playing, I don't uh, – in looking at the defensive line and, and what they did last week against the Falcons, Knowing what Justin Herbert is and knowing that this the skill level and the step up. Um, now they do have a chance because it's at home, but I, I got them 34 to about 20, 34, 23. 
uh, charge. That's all around the world. That's all around the world, right? So, I, I, I think the I think the game will be. I think the game uh, will be enter, entertaining. Um, and yeah, it should be. It, it should be. And I, I think one of the things that you'll see is is turnovers. The, the Browns can't have them. Uh, they have to play a really good game. But is it possible that they could come here at home? Uh, you know, who knows? And like you said, I think the special teams will be uh, something that we have to look at in this one as well. But hopefully we have a, a classic like we did last year, either way. Yeah, yeah and either, for sure. Just real, just real quick, Dan, um, and coming in here, it looks like it's going to be a dream day, you know, for anybody coming to Cleveland. Talking about low 60s, sun shining, should be a good day, no weather, because, I mean, once it's October, you know, in this type of, you know, <laughs> anyway, you go from about Ohio over, once you get to this time of year, it's it's definitely it, it, it's a coin toss as far as you know what the weather usually be, that's promising. huge for the Chargers, man. Like if, if they're playing this game in December, I think we're having a different conversation, right? I mean, the fact that the Chargers get the Browns right now without Deshaun Watson, without the weather factors that give them a huge home field advantage, like the time of the game of this season really, really does matter. I think that's a great point. No question about it. Absolutely. And, you know, look, look, a lot of factors here, you know, the Browns got to stick to what they do best. Um, And I'm going to tell you right now, if if the Browns cannot put together a decent defensive showing, it's going to get really, really loud here. It's going to get really, really loud. Fans, media, they're all over Joe Woods. You know, I mean, last week you're you're without four starters and they're still all over it. Um, But, you know, Chargers come in here, hang 450, 500 yards. It's going to be a big, big issue here with Cleveland. Chargers. Coming to First Energy Sunday to face your Cleveland Browns. Uh, we did the best we could here to give them as coverage as we can here on Crossover Thursday. Locked on Browns, locked on Chargers. He is Dan Wade, part of the team over there to Locked on Chargers podcast. Make sure you guys check it out. They do a great job, whether it is on your favorite podcast app or, of course, on YouTube. Uh, for my partner, Garrett Bush, at GBush91, the ultimate Cleveland sports show, 92.3, the fans, the barbershop, Saturday mornings, pregame, postgame coverage. You know, they're going to talk Garrett. They're going to make Garrett talk till he literally has no voice left. <laughs> We're going to see that how that works yes. out. Make sure you're following at GBush91. Myself, at Jeff underscore LJ underscore Lloyd. Make sure you're following uh, on your favorite podcast platform on YouTube. And, of course, like I said, go on ahead and check out the Roku app. Everybody, we're about uh, about 72 hours away. We'll see the way it all plays out on Sunday. And thanks, everybody, for listening. See, um, I, I'm a little bit more confident, but I, I'm not saying 11-point loss. I, I truly think it was a big week for the secondary for the Browns last week. Even though the Browns were without three starters on the defensive line, it was the first week. Uh, you know, where, uh, you know, you, you did not have Anthony Walker man in the middle and basically making sure everybody was in line. And I'll tell you right now, we knowing Anthony Walker in the year and a half we've covered him now, they probably got to throw him out. Or like Jacob Phillips and Jeremiah Wusukormo are like, dude, go home. Get out of my apartment. I don't want you here anymore. Because he's saying, look, man, I schooled you guys better than this. You know, if we got to go through this 100 times to make sure you guys are making the right calls, this is going to happen. Miles, look, Miles, look today. Tells one thing, and a lot of people said this. Everybody thought Miles could probably go Sunday right. against the Falcons. Browns were precautionary. The smile was there. Body was moving. I didn't see a brace anywhere. So sure. if I don't see a brace anywhere, I think the Browns think that he's probably going to be okay to go. Um, Tavon Bryan wasn't at practice. I can't believe we're actually mentioning, you know, it'd be, it'd be good if the Browns could get Tavon Bryan. But that's where the defensive tackle play is truly at right now. <laughs> For the Browns, don't even get Garrett going, the former defensive lineman over there. <laughs> losing it. On a weekly basis. But for the Browns, and th- for everybody in the NFL, for everybody who's at this odds juxtaposition where their team is, it's the time now. Like, it's time now where, you know, you can't have lapses where you say, oh, well, you know, that happened, that one busted play, and we ended up on the wrong side. It's time for teams to start to evolving into what they are going to be. You know, you got to yeah. find a way to do both ends on the offensive side of the ball. On defense, you got to be able to rush the passer. You got to be able to, you know, get key run stops. You got to be able to get your team off the field in third and long. I think the Browns are trending that way. Um, but I do agree with her in this respect. One of the reasons that game last year was as close for as long as it was is that was basically Baker Mayfield's swan song as far as good games for the Cleveland Browns. Crazy. Because after that, it went worse and worse and worse and worse. Um, so to think Jacoby can put up those type of numbers over 300, two scores. He can, but it's probably not the best situation for the Browns. This is going to be a tough one. I mean, if you figure the lines about a field goal, I can see the Browns. And this is where it's interesting because if you say the lines, you know, the lines a field goal, Browns have a young kicker that they love at home. 
Um, as you said, the Chargers might be looking for one to come into this game. So certainly interesting from that standpoint. This is going to be a tough, tough road. I'm not saying the Browns can't do it, but it's just going to. There's a lot of factors that really got to hit. I think for the Browns to be able to pull this one off. Yeah, totally. I, I, I mean, I get that. I, I think the nice thing for Jacoby Brissett specifically is the same nice thing as it was last year for Baker, which is, hey, their rushing attack is going to do things to the Chargers defense. They're going to open up some really easy plays for him offensively with play action. And I think if you're boiling down the Chargers season so far, three quarterbacks they've made extremely uncomfortable. The one they didn't was Trevor Lawrence. And they did that on the back of getting up early, having a strong running game, right? And the Chargers not being able to get home pass rushing wise. And that's another big question for this one is can the Chargers without Joey Bosa continue to keep getting pressure or will Jacoby Brissett be super comfortable back there? I hate this game for the Chargers. I mean, I think if the game, <laughs> I think if the game goes right for the Browns, it's going to be a lower scoring game because I think, I mean, it's, hey, shrink the possessions, Right, they could come up with a couple sixteen play drives in this one if they have some timely, you know, short yarded situations, which the Chargers have been better at this year, still haven't been good. And for the Chargers to say, can you stop that one explosive play? Every game, it's that one explosive play that gets you. You've done it three weeks in a row. If you take out the Chargers giving up four hundred and thirty nine rushing yards this year. If you take away three big plays, that minus 177 yards. They've given up 177 rushing yards on three plays, one each in the last couple of weeks. I think it's going to be more methodical from that from the Browns. I think it's going to be many more, you know, seven, eight, nine yard gains from someone like Nick Chubb and their tackling has been tested. I don't like this game. I do think the Chargers in their offense should be able to do enough. I do think they found some answers last week. Putting up 34 without Keenan Allen is a hugely good sign for them going down at the end of the game and icing it with that long drive. I mean, I'm, I feel like I'm playing this out in my head right now. Like, I still don't know who I'm going to pick. I'll, I'll pick the Chargers. I think the Chargers need it. Both teams need it for the Browns. It's, hey, it's keep Definitely. treading water. Try to keep, separate yourself in the AFC North. For the Chargers, it's, hey, keeping pace with the Chiefs. Keeping pace for both of these teams in a crazy AFC. I like the Chargers 28-24 in this one. I'm going to say I do not want to leave this up to Cade York's leg by any means. So I think if they can get that four-point lead <laughs> towards the end of the game, make Jacoby Brissett have to throw it. Don't let them be able to run it into the end zone and make them have to score a touchdown. I think the Chargers can really get this thing done. But like I said before, I think game flow is going to have a lot to do with it. Last time the Browns got up early and the Chargers just had a miraculous comeback, really, right? But if they can get up and keep grinding on the Chargers like the Jaguars did, that second half against the Jaguars was awful. I, I mean, the, the defense was ground down. The offense couldn't get anything working. The defense was exhausted. And it never ended up getting close again. Like, there's a, a reality where the game kind of plays out like that. I will pick the Chargers in a close one, though. 